I started a sneaker collection with just a $20 bill, and now I'm going to count down my top 10 sneaker thrift finds. So it's crazy to think, but as of this December, December 2021, we've been doing the sneaker thrift challenge every single week for over six months. And honestly, I didn't think that I would still be able to be doing this series six months later in the good sense, in that you guys really like it and are enjoying it and supporting it, but also I didn't expect it to take this long to grab a pair of Nike Air Mags, but it makes sense, it's a $20,000 sneaker, so I don't know what I was expecting. But because it's Christmas time and we're about knee deep in the holidays, right now I wanted to change things up a little bit in the spirit of Christmas and rather than just doing a standard $20 sneaker collection episode I wanted to count down the top 10 best sneaker finds that I had thrifting for the last six months and uh, to be completely honest the other reason we're not doing a standard episode is because I'm waiting on like four different packages to come in that have a pretty heavy bearing on the series and uh, they haven't come in yet so uh, rather than doing a standard episode we're gonna wait until next week to have another standard episode and I can guarantee that next week's episode is gonna be the craziest episode yet like seriously some of the sneakers that we've got coming in are crazy and I think these sneakers might actually push us to the halfway point or just past it which is crazy. Like I know Nike mags are 20k, hopefully we can find a pair for cheaper or trade for a pair that's cheaper or something like that, but uh, I think we're getting closer and um, I'm really excited about next week's episode. But before we dive into the video, I want to tell you guys about a really cool new app that I've been working with called Unboxed and a crazy giveaway that they've got going on. So Unboxed has teamed up with sneaker designer Johnny's Kicks to create a crazy one of one Air Jordan 1. I mean look at this thing, this thing is absolutely insane. And the craziest part is that you can actually win this pair for yourself and all you have to do to enter is is download the Unbox app by clicking the link in the description below and then update your profile by adding a profile picture and a background. And that alone will give you one entry. And then for the second entry, all you have to do is take a screenshot of your profile, post it on your social media and hashtag Unboxed app. And that's literally all there is to it. And the giveaway runs from now until January 3rd, 2022. And the winner will be picked on January 6th. Personally, I love the Unboxed app. I use it almost every single day. It's a great way to track your sneaker collection. And I actually have every single one of my sneakers in the app. So if you guys want to check out my entire sneaker collection, you can check it out by searching me on the Unbox app. So once again, if you guys want to enter the giveaway for this crazy custom pair of Air Jordan 1s, make sure to click the link in the description below and download the Unbox app. But with all that being said, let's dive right into the list of my top 10 sneaker thrift finds. Starting things off at number 10, we've got this pair of women's Ultra Boosts. So at first glance, this pair of Ultra Boosts might not look like anything special, and to be fair, it isn't really. The reason I wanted to put this shoe on the list is because this shoe is the very first sneaker that we picked up in the entire series. And I know that kind of seems like a cop out a little bit, but uh, for a couple weeks, it was the most profitable pair of sneakers that I had picked up. One thing I learned very quickly in this series is that only going to regular thrift stores like Goodwills is not going to yield you the best results. You can find some decent sneakers and it's a great place to start the series because it's the place with the cheapest prices. But at the end of the day, the stuff that you're going to find, you're not going to be able to flip for that much. I mean, of course, of course, there's that once in a blue moon situation where you find a pair of sneakers or really anything that you can flip for quadruple the price that you buy it for, but that is so rare and I don't think it's actually happened to me at Goodwill during this series. And if you couldn't have guessed, Goodwill is where I found this pair of sneakers and I didn't realize at the time that it would be a couple more weeks before I found another pair of sneakers in as good condition as this shoe was and for as good a price as this shoe was. This shoe was priced at $6.99, which is kind of annoying because it was in almost my wife's exact size and she actually had this exact same color way except I bought it for full retail price and uh, the shoe that I found was almost brand new it was crazy so I could have just waited like you know two years <laughs> to buy that pair of shoes and just picked up a pair of Goodwill that's a dumb thing to say regardless it was a really great find I ended up selling it on eBay and after fees and shipping I was able to add $29.33 back into the sneaker collection fund and actually the net profit was $22.32 so with that one purchase I actually ended up making more money than I started with it's actually kind of nuts to think about but that was really the best purchase that I had for a while and it really did help accelerate the series. Coming in at number 9 is the Air Jordan 4 Pure Money. So this shoe was an absolute surprise to me which I guess to be fair all the sneakers in the series are surprises until I walk into the store but this shoe I didn't even know was in the store after 20 minutes of being in the store and as I was about to leave I spotted this bin full of sneakers I started digging through the bin and I found it at the very bottom of the bin and as you may have been able to guess because you've probably seen this store a bunch because I go to the store all the time I found this shoe at Play-Doh's closet and the best part was Plato's closet actually had this 
shoe listed for 45 bucks. Now there's a couple reasons why I think the shoe was listed for so cheap, because usually when I find Air Jordan sneakers in decent condition at Play-Dohs, they're listed for like 80 to 150 bucks. This shoe though was priced at just 45 bucks, and I'm assuming that's because there was this giant stain in the netting of the shoe, and it just looked like it had been worn pretty heavily. And I don't know what it was, maybe it was overconfidence, I don't know what, but when I was looking at this shoe, I was like, I could definitely get this stain out with a rejuvenator. So I threw the shoe through the washing machine with the rejuvenator um, laundry solution. And when the pure monies came out of the laundry, they were stain free, they smelled incredible, and I was able to sell them on eBay, and after fees and shipping, I was able to add $123.94 back into the sneaker collection fund, which actually netted me a profit of $78.94, which at the time was the best net profit we had had so far, I think. Not 100% sure, maybe it wasn't, but regardless, it was up there, it was crazy. And there was something just so satisfying about taking a shoe that was essentially left for dead, even by Plato's Closet because they priced it so cheap, cleaning it up, making it look almost like new, and then selling it to someone else who can wear it for the next couple years and enjoy it. Even though the shoe is number nine on the list, it's one of my favorite thrift pickups so far. Coming in at number eight, we've got the Air Jordan 3 Hall of Fame slash White Cement 3 Custom. So this shoe was one of the biggest fake outs that I ever had because when I bought the sneaker, I thought it was one kind of shoe and then when I took it home, I realized it was a different kind of shoe. So the way that this all happened is that I went to Buffalo Exchange one day, as I do, in Center City, Philadelphia, and I was looking behind the counter and I saw what I thought was a pair of white cement threes. And in my head, I was thinking, Jackpot. This is it. No matter what the shoe costs, I'm buying it. A pair of white cement threes in a size that's pretty close to mine, I think it was a size 10. I was, uh, I was stoked. In fact, I would have probably kept that pair for myself. So I asked the employee at Buffalo Exchange to grab the shoe for me. I looked it over, it looked good. It was priced at 80 bucks, so I bought it. And on the entire drive home, I was stoked. I was like, I cannot believe I found white cement threes. And I was still stoked until I got home and I checked the, uh, the production dates of the sneaker because I wanted to know which white cement three it was. And I realized that the shoe released like in 2018 or 2017, which set off some red flags because I don't think there was a pair of regular White Cement 3s that released in that time frame. There was the free throw lines, there was the Justin Timberlake, Tinker Hatfield ones with a little swoosh on the side, but that was pretty much it. So I searched the product number on the shoe on eBay and I realized that everything that was coming up were Air Jordan 3 Hall of Fames or Air Jordan 3 Katrinas. And uh, at that moment I realized I had been got. And I looked back at the sneaker and I realized that this shoe was an incredibly well done custom but still a custom. And uh, the problem with customs, even though I'm a customizer, I love customs, is that they're a lot harder to sell because eBay won't authenticate them like they do with regular non-custom sneakers. And uh, customs, you never know how long they're gonna last. You don't know how durable they're gonna be because the paint that you use, you know, depending on how you apply it, can crack off almost immediately or last forever. You have no idea. So at that point, I was thinking I had just spent $80 on a shoe that I'm probably not gonna be able to sell. And if I do sell it, I'm gonna sell it for a loss. So I ended up listing it, I think for like 130 bucks because I figured I'll take offers if anyone gives me offers and uh, I'll drop the price, you know, after a week. And I think within six hours, someone bought it. And I had said in the listing specifically that it was a custom sneaker. At the beginning of the listing, it said, custom shoe or something like that. I don't remember exactly what I said, but it was very clear that it was a custom and someone bought it for the full asking price. And I think after fees and shipping, I made $127.54. So not only did the sneaker sell, but I made a net profit of $47.54. A pretty high net profit for a shoe that I didn't expect to sell at all. Now I do have to admit the custom was excellent. Like it was incredibly well done. The shoe had definitely been worn even after it had been customized. So I wasn't too worried about durability. And also it faked me out. Someone who reviews sneakers professionally, someone who's customized sneakers professionally for years, and it still faked me out. So whoever customized that shoe, bravo to you, you did an incredible job. Most of the customs that I find at thrift stores and Buffalo exchanges and Play-Dohs are usually garbage, like straight garbage. They look like they've been sharpied or maybe someone took just acrylic paints and painted the top of the shoe. They all look like crap. This one looked incredible and was very, very well done. So a total surprise for me and it was a bad situation that turned into a good situation very quickly. And uh, yeah, ended up being a great buy. At number seven is the ALD New Balance 550s. So this shoe, I didn't exactly find at a thrift store. I found it at ThriftCon, which is still a thrifting event, but there were resellers there selling sneakers. And the way that I found this shoe is that I was walking through the event with my wife. We were kind of going through all the clothing and there was a section kind of like the trading pit at SneakerCon where people just had their stuff laid out all over the floor. And I noticed that there was a couple different groups of people that had sneakers laid out. And I was walking through the sneakers. There was a lot of used stuff that was nice, but way overpriced. And I happened to find a, a section of floor with a guy who was selling a pair of ALD New Balances for 300 bucks. And at the time, I don't know when you're watching this video, but that particular pair of New Balance 550s, brand new, which is 
his pair, his pair was brand new, was selling on StockX for I think like 450, and he was only asking 300. So I immediately took $300 out of my wallet, gave it to him, and bought them right on the spot. And I was so quick to do that because in my head, no matter what, I was gonna make at least $100 on these sneakers. And I actually ended up not even selling them; they were brand new. I ended up trading them for a pair of off-white fives with some other sneakers later on in the series. Which, if you guys have watched the series, you know exactly what pair of off-white fives it was. And those 550s ended up being great trade bait for this pair of off-white fives, and it made the whole deal work. And I was so happy with that pickup. And while it's not technically a thrifted pickup, it was from ThriftCon, but it was still a brand new pair of sneakers. Um, it's one of the best pickups that I had just because even if I hadn't traded it, which I think I got more value by trading it, I could have sold it for at least 150 and netted probably 120 bucks off of that sale. So definitely a great pickup and one that I would do again in an instant. Next up at number six, we've got the Adidas Yeezy Desert Boot. So the reason I put this pair of Yeezys on the list in particular is because out of the two Yeezys that I found at thrift stores, this was the only one that didn't lose me money. The other pair that I had was a pair of 350s. I bought them for way too much money and I think I ended up selling them for a loss of like 40 bucks which is insane I should have never bought them I only bought them because they were 350s and I thought that whenever you buy 350s you're probably gonna make money but that was a stupid assumption and I should never have done it this pair of desert boots though I bought for $120 from Buffalo Exchange and at the time I didn't realize it would be such a good buy in fact when I bought this pair of Yeezys I bought them along with the pair of Balenciagas which I actually thought I'd sell for a lot more Turns out I lost money on those and only made money on the Yeezy Desert Boots. Turns out the right pickup of the day was not the Balenciagas and was just the Desert Boots. I should have left the Balenciagas there, but you live and you learn. So this pair of shoes was really interesting for a lot of different reasons. One, it was in my size and I kind of wanted to keep it. Two, it was in excellent condition. And three, it came with a StockX tag, which honestly at the time was more of a red flag than really any kind of comfort. Usually when you buy a pair of shoes from StockX that you're gonna wear, you cut the tag off. But this shoe is worn, StockX doesn't sell worn sneakers, so they must have bought it new. And it also still had the tag, which means that they must have worn this shoe with the StockX tag, which honestly is not a great look. You kind of look a little silly walking around with a StockX tag. And the fact that that was on there made me think that maybe this had been some sort of replica, that maybe the factory in China had put the StockX tag on, because they do do that to make it looked legit and he was wearing it with a tag just so that people wouldn't think it was fake. So honestly, it was a risk. I ended up buying it for 120 bucks, like I said, and uh, the good news was I sold it on eBay and it passed authentication, so it turns out the shoe was in fact authentic. And crazily enough, after fees and shipping, I was actually able to add $184.88 back into the sneaker collection fund, which left me with a surprisingly decent net profit of $64.88 which actually sort of made up for the money I lost with the Balenciagas. I think I actually, if you combine those sales together or purchase together, I think I netted like 20 bucks. And when I started with this challenge, I never would have guessed how many pairs of Yeezys that I find in the wild. I find a lot of pairs and usually, surprisingly, they're just bad buys. They're either still at retail price, they're overpriced, or they're in terrible condition. And uh, all three of those things are not things that I wanna spend money on. So I guess the takeaway from this series is be very careful about the Yeezys that you're buying because they're not as hype as they used to be and there's so many pairs out there that you can lose money on a lot of pairs. Then coming in at number five, we've got the Y3 Pure Boost. So this shoe I actually picked up at Plato's Closet the day after Black Friday. And the reason I went the day after Black Friday is because I was there on Black Friday and uh, there was a bunch of sneakers and people just weren't really buying them. So I knew the next day I'd have a chance to go back in and sort of pick through all the sneakers that were still available. And for some reason, this pair of Y3s was still available and priced at only 55 bucks. Now I found out later on that the box that these Y3s came in was a mismatched box. It was still a Y3 box for the same sneaker silhouette, but it was for a different colorway. I'm assuming whoever sold these sneakers to Plato's Closet maybe switched up the boxes and kept one pair and sold the other pair, I don't know. But uh, that made it a little bit more difficult to sell. But just knowing that this shoe is a Y3 and looking at the resale prices for this sneaker online, I knew that this shoe was gonna make money. Now, brand new pairs of this shoe usually resell for like 350 on eBay, which is kind of nuts. And uh, this pair, while not brand new, was still in decent condition, it just needed a cleanup. So I cleaned the shoe up with Rejuvenator, it had a box, it had a dust bag, albeit not the right box, it was still a box, and uh, I was able to sell them. And I think after shipping fees, I was able to add $160.05 back into the sneaker collection fund. I think I could have actually made more if I'd been willing to sit on the sneakers for longer, but I was just trying to move them quickly, and that's kind of how I move all the sneakers in the collection. I just want to churn through the inventory, because the longer that they sit, the more I'm losing money, and it's better to just get a quick flip, make a decent amount of money and move on rather than waiting for like six months and hoping to make like 20 extra bucks. But I think after all was said and done, I made a net profit 
of I believe $105.05, which is absolutely insane. And although this Y3 Pure Boost is not an incredibly popular silhouette, there is still a market there, and I made more money on that shoe than I did on any pair of Yeezys. So I've learned throughout doing this that it's not always the shoes that you would think would make you the most money that actually end up making you the most money. In fact, you know, Yeezys, Jordans, they'll make you something, but they're not gonna make you what some random sort of more obscure pair of sneakers may make you if you happen to find the right buyer. So definitely happy with that purchase, and that actually isn't the only shoe that I bought from Play those Black Friday weekend that made it to this list. Next up at number four, we've got the Adidas Ultra Boost Haven collaboration. I actually didn't realize that the next sneaker on the list was the other shoe that I got from Plato's Black Friday sale, but it is, and it turned out to be probably the best net profit that I made on any sneaker ever. Well, I guess I should clarify that, any sneaker ever from the $20 sneaker collection. So this was a shoe that I actually did pick up on the Black Friday day itself. I waited in line at like the sneaker desk that they had for Black Friday, and I could pick out three different sneakers. This was, I believe, the second pair of sneakers that I picked out because I saw that it was still sitting there and it was priced at 21 bucks and I remember from like 2017 or 2018 when this shoe first came out it was reselling for like 300 to 400 dollars because it was a hyped up ultra boost collaboration and at that time those are some of the hottest shoes in the market and the craziest part was that this shoe was essentially brand new it had its box which makes shoes so much easier to sell it had barely been worn if worn at all I think there was maybe some dirt on the tread which means I guess someone tried it on but that was about it and uh, for 21 bucks, I mean, even for just a boring regular pair of Ultra Boost, that's still a great price, especially when it's basically brand new in a box. So no surprise, I was able to sell the shoe very, very quickly. I think I accepted an offer on eBay, and I was able to sell the shoe for $185.45. No, that's not the $300 resale price that it was going for back in 2017, but it doesn't go for that anymore. I think brand new pairs on StockX are like 200 bucks. But the craziest part about this whole transaction wasn't so much how much I sold the shoe for, because 184 bucks isn't a huge amount of money, it was the net profit and the percentage of net profit. So I bought this shoe for just 21 bucks, I ended up selling it for around 185 bucks, and I made a net profit of $164.45. Let me just do a really quick calculation. So I made over eight times my initial investment, which is by far the most insane net profit I've ever made, probably on any sneaker that I've sold. Um, $20 sneaker collection or otherwise. Also, to be fair, it was just a nice looking pair of Ultra Boost. It came in all black. I believe it was cageless. Just a really nice looking pair of shoes. And back in 2017, it was a shoe that I really, really wanted. And so to be able to grab it for so cheap, was pretty cool. Following that up, at number three, we've got the Air Jordan 12 Flu Games. So this actually was another shoe that I found in that sort of hidden corner bin at Plato's Closet. And what's crazy is that this wasn't the only pair of like decent Jordans in this bin. There was, I believe, 72 and 10 Air Jordan 11s. There was some sort of like pink and black Air Jordan 12 women's pair. I think there was a pair of Air Jordan 10s. There was also a pair of Satin 5s too, if I'm not mistaken, but a bunch of decent pairs. But after looking up all of these shoes on eBay, the only pair that really had a guaranteed profit potential was was the Flu Game 12s. And actually another reason that I didn't pick up any of the other Jordans in the box was because I was a little concerned about authenticity. The Air Jordan 11s looked a little bit too wide, um, so because of that I didn't grab them. But after selling the 12s and them getting passed as authentic through eBay, it made me think that maybe the 11s were legit and they were just kind of stretched out. So maybe I should have grabbed them, but I didn't. And for me, this was kind of frustrating because the Flu Game 12s were a shoe that I had sold years ago and I really wanted back in my collection. And this shoe came in a size nine and a half and was in pretty decent condition. It smelled a little bit like smoke, but it was in really nice condition visually. And I think I actually ended up picking up this pair from Plato's Closet for just 70 bucks in decent condition and in a size nine and a half. And I think if I had gone to a consignment store, I probably would have bought the same pair for around 200 And at the time, I think this was the first big Air Jordan pickup in the series. I may have picked up the Phoenix Suns 8s before this, which actually ended up being a pretty good deal as well, but this was the first time I was picking up like a classic colorway in a shoe that was in my size, in great condition, and uh, it was definitely a shoe that I almost regret selling. But I did end up selling it, and I think after shipping and fees, I was able to add $181.05 back into the collection fund, which meant that we had a pretty decent net profit of $111.05. So all around, it was a great pickup. Whether I would have kept it or sold it, it was a winner. Coming in at number two is probably the biggest heavy hitter in the entire series, and that's the Travis Scott Air Jordan 6s. So I actually grabbed this shoe from Buffalo Exchange, and one thing you may have noticed throughout the series is that a lot of my super crazy pickups of like really hyped up sneakers ended up being at Buffalo Exchange, and that was for a couple different reasons. One, I had a friend at the store at the time, so he would like let me know if anything crazy was in. Two, they actually got a lot of really great product. They were getting Jordans and Yeezys and things like that because I guess people are just wealthier in the city, and they would drop off their shoes 
at a store that was just down the street from them rather than driving all the way out into New Jersey and going to my Plato's Closet. And uh, I think that's why they always had crazy stuff. And they still have crazy stuff like Jordans and Yeezys and shoes that you wouldn't really find anywhere else. So when I found this pair of Travis Scott Sixes, I was surprised but I wasn't that surprised. Now, I will say that I was a little bit concerned about authenticity. There was an employee at Buffalo Exchange who was legit checking sneakers, and there was another store owner who would come into Buffalo Exchange and kind of check out what they had. So I was somewhat confident, but I wanted to double check. So I ran the shoe through the Check Check app, and I ended up selling the shoe on eBay, and it was in fact authentic. But at the time, I wasn't 100% sure, and Buffalo Exchange had the shoe listed for 250 bucks, so it wasn't a cheap pickup, and if it was fake, it was basically worthless. So I actually sat in the store for about 30 minutes waiting for the Check Check information to come back just to ensure that it was in fact legit and uh, I bought it. I bought it for 250 bucks, which at the time I think was the most that I had spent on any pair of sneakers in this series. And when I bought the shoe, initially my plan was to go to like a sneaker convention like SneakerCon and sell the sneaker at a booth or maybe try and trade it for something else. But that didn't pan out. Um, with COVID and just family stuff going on, I wasn't able to attend any events. But I did end up cleaning the sneaker up and then selling it on eBay and making a pretty decent profit. So after shipping fees, I was able to add $326.45 back into the sneaker collection fund, which meant that I had a net profit or made a net profit of $76.45. And while percentage wise, it's not an incredible net profit, 76 bucks is still 76 bucks. And I was able to say that I picked up a pair of Travis Scott's at essentially what is a thrift store. So uh, that was pretty crazy and uh, a great story, if nothing else. And then finally at number one is the Air Jordan 1 Hyper Royals. So we actually have a pair in the $20 sneaker collection, a DS pair, which we got through a trade. This is not the pair that we're talking about. I'm actually talking about a pair that we found at Buffalo Exchange. So this pair was a size 13, very lightly worn, unfortunately no box, and it was priced at just $85. And what was crazy is that when we found this shoe, I don't know when you guys are watching this video, but when we found this shoe, it was like maybe four months after the sneaker had released. And I was actually talking to a friend who worked at the store at the time, and he's actually the one that let me know that the sneakers were in the store. And he said that the reason a lot of these crazy sneakers get donated is because near the end of the month, people just need money for certain things. So that's why he thinks that these shoes were in the store at the time that they were. It makes a lot of sense to me. Again, it was Buffalo Exchange in Center City, Philadelphia. So there's a bunch of rich clientele around. But uh, I was really, really surprised to find them. But the best part was that after minimal cleaning, I was able to sell the shoes. And after fees and shipping, I was able to add $270.45 back into the sneaker collection fund. Which means that we had a net profit of $185.45, which is an insane net profit. And it makes sense because it's such a hyped up sneaker that we got for a decent price. And while no, this pair isn't a pair of Travis Scott's, it's not anything insane. It's still kind of crazy to find a pair at a thrift store style store and uh, to get it for 85 bucks and then have a net profit of 185 bucks is pretty great. And there's a reason why those shoes are at the top of this list. And the reason is, I still haven't found anything better than those sneakers yet. I've traded for some pretty crazy sneakers. I traded for these, I've traded for Off-White Fives, I've traded for Nike Dunk Off-Whites. Um, we've got an insane pair of sneakers coming in next week, which by the way, if you guys have not yet subscribed to the channel and wanna see next week's episode, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you guys know as soon as it drops. But that pretty much wraps up the list for today. And actually at this point, I would love to know your thoughts on this list because if you've watched the entire series, you know every single sneaker that I thrifted. So if you guys feel like I missed anything or maybe I put a sneaker too high on the list or too low on the list. I would just love to know your thoughts on the list in general in the comment section down below. And like I said, next week is going to be absolutely insane, quite possibly the best episode ever. So make sure to stay tuned for that and subscribe if you haven't yet. But with all that being said, thank you so much for watching. Merry Christmas, and I'll see you all in the next one.